There are many good reviews out already that focus on the quality and the feel of the Streak 65, so we'll quickly go through those and then I'll focus on gaming much more. The Streak 65 is my first keyboard that I will review, and there is a specific reason why I wanted my first review to be from a low profile keyboard. I think these can be superior for competitive FPS games, and in this video, I'll explain to you why. So it's a 65% layout, and it does come with a rubberized USB C cable. The keyboard is aluminium, but it does not feel very high quality to me. The highest quality keyboard that I have here is the Donkey X Bar Milo Maya Pro and that feels way more premium than this one. But let's not forget that quality does not mean anything in game. And the Streak 65 only cost about 110 euros or dollars. The keycaps are ABS and they definitely feel kinda cheap and for me they started to look greasy after about 3 weeks of use. To this point I've been fairly negative about the keyboard but the fact is that for a low profile keyboard the feeling is actually quite good, especially when we consider it to the likes of the Logitech G915 T that I have here, it costs about 220 euros or dollars and the feeling is just way, way, way worse than on the Fnatic Streak 65. The switches on the board are apparently made in collaboration with Kale, and these are called Fnatic Speed switches. They are low profile and they are somewhat smooth, but not to the extent of the Omnipoints in the Apex Pro or the Lecker switch in the Wooding 2 HE. The steps are quite okay, but the spacebar on my unit has developed some rattle. Typing experience is okay, but it's definitely not the most highest quality keyboard I've tried for that sense. From the options that I have tried, it's definitely beaten by the Ducky X Varmila Maya Pro and the Wooding 2 HE. So let's talk about what makes this keyboard so good for gaming in my opinion. First off, one thing I really like is the 65% layout. I don't really need the extra space myself, but I don't like to tilt my keyboard that much, but I do enjoy it when my hands are in a natural position and in a good angle from my elbows. The most comfort I do get is with a 65 or 60 keyboard, but usually a 10 keyless keyboard is also fine. Fnatic doesn't really advertise the latency of the keyboard, but the actuation point is 1mm, so the keyboard does feel very responsive. The actuation point can be very important for games like Fortnite, but for TAC, FPS and Apex and Warzone for example, I do not consider it that important. But what I consider important is input accuracy. Wooding has a great article about this that I suggest you read, but the benefits that I consider are different than what they do. The general idea is the same, so what we want to consider is is the actuation point and the total travel distance. Let me show you this live recording where I explain this as simply as I can. Important thing about the travel distance and the actuation point is the distance in between those. So the actuation point for the Streak 65 is 1 mm and total travel is 3.2 mm. So basically if I bottom out the switch and then depress it, the switch will deactuate again at that 1 mm actuation point. So there is this 2.2 mm distance where nothing happens. So this basically means two things. The switch will deactuate once it it's above that 1mm actuation point. So if your goal is to spam that button as much as you can without holding it down, you always have to wait for it to debounce. I don't really play any games that benefit from fast spamming the keyboard, but there is another benefit that I do consider much more important. Because the max travel distance is smaller, when I release the key, it deactuates faster. This means that I can press another key faster that was in conflict with the previous key. Movement in many games is a good example for this. For example, in CSGO, if you strafe to the left and press the right straight key, you will stop moving completely. Now this of course won't happen to you in game as you're so used to your keyboard and the dead zone that it has. But once you try a keyboard that actually has a smaller dead zone, like for example a Streak 65 or the Logitech G915 TKL, strafing might feel much more responsive for you depending on your setup and the way you use your keyboard. Now you can actually achieve pretty much the same results with any keyboard if you can hover over that actuation point. Meaning that you don't go that much below or above that. I myself find it very hard with the Apex Pro TKL in competitive situations because the switches are so smooth and light. And it can make your movement feel inconsistent, which does not happen with a low profile keyboard, as you can pretty much always bottom out the switch. And to be clear, the keyboard does not only need to be low profile, the switches should be lower profile as well. Which the Streak 64 has, but I think Fnatic botched it a little bit, as I think these should be lower profile still. For example, the Cherry MX Speeds have the same exact dead zone, and the Logitech G915 TKL low profile switches have a 
1.2 mm travel distance, which feels nice and responsive in game, but the fact is that the feel on the G915 TKL and the quality is not what you want for the price. Therefore, I do have to say that the Fnatic Streak 65 is now my favorite gaming keyboard. One thing that I also need to mention for you gamers out there who don't like wrist rests, a low profile keyboard can really help with your ergonomics. I can play multiple hours with the Streak 65 without any kind of discomfort or pain and not using a wrist rest. I use the Streak 65 for work as well as I do think the typing experience is okay, but there I do use a wrist rest. But hey, that was pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know in the comment section if I forget something or if you want something more in my future keyboard reviews. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you enjoy my content, hit the subscribe button and see you in the next one.